Stranger Things Without CGI, How Everything is Arranged in Reality The Netflix original series Stranger Things is notorious for having unique storylines and unforgettable characters. The show is also famous for its superhuman creatures and unearthly monsters, which of course requires a lot of CGI and visual effects from the crew and the creative minds behind the show. But have you ever wondered what Stranger Things looks like without the CGI? Well, let's jump into it. Demogorgons When it comes to scary monsters and unusual creatures, the Demogorgons are definitely on top of the list. Ever since their first appearance in Season 1, fans and viewers from all over the world have been stumped by these giant human-eating monsters. And, yes, while they may look extremely scary on screen, Demogorgons are actually just nothing less than green screen creations and behind-the-scenes work. Mostly done by the actor and performer, Mark Steger. The creators of the show, the Duffer Brothers have been very honest about keeping the CGI and the visual effects to a bare minimum. Wanting to retain an authentic aesthetic and vibe to the show, the Duffers decided on keeping stuntmen and actors still on set, in their respected monster outfits. And one of those actors portraying the Demogorgon on screen is Mark Steger. If we take a look at the behind-the-scenes footage, we see Mark all dressed up in the Demogorgon outfit, while having green cloth around his arms. The actor used his arms to move around the huge body parts of the Demogorgon. According to Mark, who opened up to Variety magazine, here are the behind-the-scenes secrets when creating the staple Stranger Things monster. Steger shared, it took about 30 minutes if I was just wearing the stunt head, 40-45 minutes if I was wearing the full animatronic head because there were batteries and motors, 23, 26 motors, just powering the head to get the pedals to open. Once I'm in the whole thing, it's pretty remarkable. It's the most complex suit I've ever worn. It's part puppet, part mechanical, part me. It didn't take that long to get accustomed to, a lot of its balance and a lot of its endurance. Figuring out what my limitations were and what I could do, what looks cool. Of course, the directors looked at the test, and they had really specific ideas of what they wanted, like how they wanted the creature to behave. My direction was, you're the shark from Jaws. It was that clear and that simple, which is great as a performer, it's like, okay, I can dial this in. You become aware of your altered biometrics, and how long your demogorgon step is, and I could see to some degree. I couldn't hear very well because when the animatronic head was on, it was really loud in there. Oftentimes, I'd miss cues or miss a direction because I literally couldn't hear. You rehearse it, you pace it off. There were times where I had to hit specific marks, but it wasn't that difficult. Who knew that the Demogorgons were actually just cast members and stuntmen dressed up in leotards and green clothes? Upside down. Now that we have covered the Demogorgons, let's go straight into the upside down world and how it was created from scratch. Even if you've seen just one episode of Stranger Things, then you definitely remember the Upside Down being a dark, hopeless, terrifying, and tense place. From complete darkness to the creepy vibe, it's safe to say none of us would ever want to visit this fictional place. But looking at how the Upside Down was created off-screen, we can't help but admire the crew and the minds at visual effects for designing such a memorable place. Let's begin by talking about the floating spores and the small things floating in the air in the upside down. Made and created specifically for this atmosphere, the dandelion seeds represent horror and anticipation for the worst. But let's see how these tiny specks and spores were created and why the filmmakers had such a difficult time coming up with solutions for the dandelion seeds. When talking to IndieWire, the Duffer brothers and production designer, Chris Trujillo opened up about their one-of-a-kind solution for the infamous upside down seeds. Spilling all the behind-the-scenes secrets, here is what the crew had to share. Essentially, at the moment that the rift was formed and unleashed the monster, this dark dimension overlaps with the Hawkins world and it gets infected with the vines and the spores. There was a combination of practical and CG vines and spores and tying together multiple locations. The practical spores were made from floating dandelions. Vines were made as practical set pieces and then extended out, when necessary, with matching CG versions. The VFX supervisor, Mark Kolb, then went on to elaborate on the way the dandelion seeds were designed to fit the movement of the characters and the cast walking around the upside-down world. The issue with the spores was a fear of people breathing it and the level of control. And we didn't want to shoot with indoor green screen. We developed a digital option that looked identical to the practical version. As the level of spores increased, 
We enhanced the practical spores digitally. Outside we used CG spores because you couldn't blow them effectively. The Mind Flayer And yet another staple creation of the Stranger Things universe is the nerve-wracking and core-shaking Mind Flayer. And here is how the crew came up with the concept of the monster. When speaking to the ringer, Paul Graff, the senior visual effects supervisor shared. It's like the Mind Flayer incarnating itself into a body. We had to figure out what does that look like, and then how do we get there from exploding rats? The very first meeting that we had with the Duffers was that season 3 was going to be like the thing, John Carpenter's The Thing was what they wanted to explore. And that means we now have fleshy, goopy, liquid, heavy monsters, a hybrid between a creature and an effects simulation of traveling goop. It is all aiming to have a resemblance to practical effects, but it's not practical. There was no practical goop ever. And lastly, Graf went on to elaborate how the parts of the Mind Flayer were created behind the scenes. Given the aesthetics of the thing, it had to be really wet and shiny and drippy. Basically, it's body parts. The secret there is to not be too repetitive. We didn't want it to feel like it's only made out of one substance or it's really self-similar, but rather has a nice mix of components with different viscosity and detail because this is literally made out of anything and have some bones swim around in it and such. It's a little bit like painting with pieces of corpses. It's not so surprising to hear about just how much work goes into creating the Stranger Things universe. After all, it's a known fact that the creators, the Duffer brothers, will go through numerous takes and visions before settling on the final look of the show. As shared by the executive producer, Shane Levy, here is how the cast and crew make up the final decision for Stranger Things and the writing process that takes place behind the scenes. While we talk about how these seasons are movies, when a movie's in post you really do shed a lot of scenes and repurpose and retool things on almost every movie. And on this we'll sit down a couple times and give notes and modify a bit, but very little is cut, if any. There's probably a lot of episodes that have been shot where no scenes are cut. It's really, really interesting because in a given two-hour movie there's usually at least half an hour of scenes that get cut. On Stranger Things, both seasons, because the Duffers write and rewrite and rewrite they just like hammer this material so rigorously before it ever shoots that everything has a purpose. They also don't believe in scenes that aren't plot necessary. So you'll notice there's very few scenes, even like a delicious treat like Billy flirting with Karen Wheeler, it serves a purpose, he's trying to get information from her. So because the Duffers like all scenes to anchor into plot and necessity, it means there's very, very, very few deleted scenes. But what do you think? Were you shocked to see your favorite show without its iconic CGI effects? Which creature is your favorite? We would love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, make sure you hit the like button below the video. And if you are new to our channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our very exciting videos. Goodbye everyone.